All right, hey, how's everyone doing tonight? It is an absolute pleasure to be back in DBS. The first time after school that I'm here after school hours, and it's not for punishment, so it's a big occasion for me. <laughs> I can't believe I'm, like, I'm still here. So um, as a comedian, I find it's very strange because this kind of a career, people have a lot of assumptions. They always think like, oh, you're either always funny or they can't take me seriously. Which means if let's say one day I get stabbed on the streets, right? I'm dying, I'm bleeding. I go to the hospital, I walk in, people are like, oh, uh, is it Halloween? Uh, is it April Fool's? And I'm like, it's an emergency, guys. Come on, somebody help, right? Nobody has a calendar. But I'm really here to talk about, you know, as a comedian or like the comedy life, what makes me a comedian versus somebody else? Like, why is it that I can see a world maybe you could say differently? Do I think faster than you? Do I have a, something that helps me think better? Not really. As a comedian, all I'm really doing is I'm telling you things that you may not have realized or seeing it from a new angle. And that angle, hopefully, will make you think differently and then laugh about it. And another thing I do as a comedian is I take what we normally just say is normal to us, that we just say, yep, that's how it is, we normalize things, and I ask, why? Like a kid, you know like the young kids that annoy you, like, why, why, why? That's what I do, but I'm 34. That's how I just never grew up, right? So think of it this way. A lot of things we do in life, we just do it repeatedly, and we accept it as the way we go for it. So this, the other day, I was taking a tram. And you know, I was, I was lining up, and suddenly this guy just cut in. He was like, oh, I'm in a rush. I'm sorry, it's going to get on. He rushes onto the tram because he didn't rush. Number one, if you're in a rush, why take a tram? <laughs> like, do you not understand? You could run, you could take a taxi, take a bus, a tram, okay. And number two, you realize by cutting in front of me, you still have to wait for me to get on that tram. So now I could be like, you know what? I'm gonna take my time, duh. I'm on the moon, duh. Right, I could do that. So as a comic, what I'm constantly doing is why, why, why? And the second thing I do after asking why is I try to find my own explanation. I try to explain the situation with no research. Basically, I'm doing what I used to do in school, which is write a bunch of rubbish and pray to God somebody gives me a grade, all right? So thank you, DBS, for all those years of practice. That way the teachers are like, bad. I'm like, yes, that's comedy in one year, right? Now what I find though is that the more I think this way, the more my world changes. In the sense, I'm living in the exact same world as you guys. However, how come I can find that angle? Because I'm constantly trying to find a new angle of explaining the situation. Rather than saying, why is this? What is the logical reasoning? Tell me why, let me research, let me use my brain, let me look at history. I'm simply using ignorance to try to explain a situation, be like, I guess it's because of this. And that's in a way creativity, right? The catalyst for me is constantly asking people who accept reality, why? Why is it so? Why is this okay? Why do we do that? Let me give you an example. We do a lot of things in our daily lives and after a while we don't even question it. But why is it that somebody from overseas comes to Hong Kong and they're like, Hong Kong people are very weird. Why do you do this? I'm confused. Because it's so abnormal to them. Now, for me, the fun part is that my job is to find the abnormalities of life and tell it to you and then make you laugh. I am not finding a funny thing in life. I'm simply finding what is interesting in life. And I encourage you to make it a game for yourself. What is interesting in life? Not what is funny, because we do not live in a funny world. We live in a very interesting world. And my job as a comedian is not to find funny, not to live funny, not to say funny, but to look at interesting and tell it to you in a funny way, where you never thought of it that way. Prime example, we've all taken the MTR trains here in Hong Kong, right? We've all done it. And I find I can use that to explain life. A lot of people ask me, Viv, do you believe in equality in the world? You know, you're an ethnic minority in Hong Kong. Do you feel discrimination, blah, 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 right? And I always say, number one, I do not believe in equality. No one was born equal. Someone has longer arms, someone shorter arms. It's, you know, it's unequal. That's how it is. That's how the world is. The thing, though, is that even in our daily lives, we are not fair to everything. For example, you get on the MTR train, right? You see those six empty seats. They are completely equal seats with the same function, but we don't treat them equally. We look at them, and our first priority is the seats on the sides, right? <laughs> that's what we all do. Nobody taught you this. You just naturally feel that's the best seat. They're not more comfortable. The only reason you pick those seats is number one, because in Hong Kong, we do not like having people on both sides of our shoulders, right? 
It minimizes the chance of someone falling asleep on us because one side is human, the other side is plastic wall. Even if somebody's butt is squeezed against the wall, you're like, you know what? It's warm. I'll take it. I'll take it. It's warm. Yes. Oh, it will never fall asleep on me. Yes. Right? Then, let's say those side two seats are taken. What are the other options? We got four more seats, right? What do we do? We go for the middle two seats, right? Why? Because there's the pillar in the middle. That's a symbol. I don't know you. You don't know me. Don't you dare cross the line. Don't fall asleep. Okay, right? You continue. Now, those two seats in the middle are taken. Two seats on the sides are taken. What do we do? We look at those two empty seats there, but we don't just sit there. We judge who's sitting next to those seats, who's on that side, who's in the middle. Because if you find there's a fat guy and a sleeping guy, you're like, you know what? I will stand. It's okay. <laughs> right? Because God forbid I'm sitting there, guy gets fatter, guy falls asleep. I'm like, I cannot go anywhere. Ah, ah what am I doing? Now let's take a step back. What did I just tell you just now? I told you literally nothing knowledgeable. I simply just told you about reality, something we all do, we all know. I did not live a funnier life than you, but I looked at it in a different way, and I delivered it to you in a funny way. So as a comic, I'm not really looking for the funny. I'm not trying to think faster than you. I'm simply trying to use things to inspire me to find a new angle. And I encourage you, play a game with yourself. How can you make something interesting? You know, what is the interesting in life? Why do we do this in Hong Kong? There's so many habits we do in Hong Kong we don't realize. Take the minibus. It's another prime example. We do the exact same thing taking the minibus. Step number one, you go to the minibus line. What do we do? We count how many people are in front of me. One, two, three, four, five. Now, let's say you're number four. You do not care how many million people are next to you, right? You're number four. You care like, you know, five minutes, irrelevant. I don't care. Doesn't matter. You are insignificant to me. So let's say you're lining up. Now you know you are number four. What do you do? Immediately, you start praying every god you know. You're like, please, next bus, four seats. Just give me four seats. That's what's no, four. Give me four seats. Be praying, right? Mini bus arrives. What do we all do? We're all like, <laughs> right? Right? Of course, not, not everybody's Scooby-Doo. We're all like, mm, uh, I don't care, right? But we're all like, <laughs> right? So now we're counting. The minibus has four seats, you're number four. But the true joy is not in getting on the minibus. It is in knowing that you are number four and there are only four seats. <laughs> right? Because you know, because you existed, number five over here has to wait for the next bus, right? And you start to sing in your head. You start singing the, I'm number four, you're number five. Five in Chinese is, mmm, mm, means no, mmm, right? And let's be honest, we all do that. We all think the same things, but some of us wear ties when we're doing it. Some of us wear high heels. Some of us wear these shoes. You know, we all do the same thing. So it's not that I'm living in a funnier world than you. It's not that I'm suddenly so much smarter than you. I'm simply asking, why do we do this? A lot of things that are normal to us, we just take it for granted. That's how it is. You know, that's Hong Kong. What are you going to do, right? You know, you see the yellow line, you stand behind the yellow line. That's it. That's the rule, right? So I ask why. As a comic, that's all I'm really doing. Every day, my job is to simply challenge reality and say, why, why, why? And why in itself inspires me to see the world in a new way. And by doing that, I'm suddenly seeing gaps in a lot of reality. A lot of things we do that are boring to you now is funny to me. I can guarantee you from today onwards, every time you take the minibus, if you find yourself lining up and you happen to be number four, you will be loud. You'll be like, <laughs> your friend is like, are you crazy? You're like, you won't get it. You won't get it. Mm, you're the number five. I'm number four. Mm, you won't get it, right? No. Okay. Another thing I always tell people is that what I try to do, and I encourage you to try, is out gamify your life. Turn your life into a game. Like, for me, every day, my job is to constantly find funny stuff that I can tell people, right? But I'm not looking for funny. I said I'm looking for interesting. So my game is how many interesting things today 
can I turn into funny things tomorrow? That's my game. I can tell you a lot of situations could be very negative, but because I, so I quote unquote gamify this, suddenly it's a fun thing for me. I'll give you a prime example. I have done many shows where let's say the audience is not interested in, in watching a comedy show. It's a private event, let's say a dinner party, they booked me to entertain them, but people don't care, right? I walked into this room one time. I saw the audience, they were clearly not interested in any performance. Now a normal human being, with a logical brain will say, wow, this is failure, you know, this is, a, this is a recipe for failure. But in my head, I'm thinking, this is a game. This is like, a, like one of those game shows at night, you know, ladies and gentlemen, let's play, will they laugh, right? So now in my head, I'm thinking, all right, our contestant number one, Vivek Mabubani, he has the background in comedy, will they laugh tonight? Let's check it out tonight, right? So this is the way I turn the situation from a very like, oh my God, I'm gonna die, these people don't care, to ooh, I wonder if anybody will giggle. Will someone cough? Will someone choke to death? What will happen, right? So that way, I'm suddenly turning a situation that had never changed, the, the situation didn't change. I simply changed the way I saw it and I played with it. So in a way, it's catalyst by itself. It's simply finding a way to see something from a new angle. We've talked about it early on. Like I said, like early on, first speaker even said, you want to do a, a, a character in a drama piece and you, you're worried someone will be insulted, just say he has a small penis, okay. So that's the rule, right? So, that, so now from now onwards, anytime I tell anybody I offend an audience, I'm so sorry, I wasn't talking about you. I was talking about a guy with a small penis. The audience is like, oh, it's okay then, I'm not offended, I have a big one. I can, I have a, I can prove it to you, trust me, you know, that sort of thing. So it's a lot of these things that I can say as a comic, what I'm really trying to do is that all I play is that I try to see the world and I force myself to take away all the things I learned in DBS in all those years. I took everything the teachers taught and lucky for me, I slept in most of my classes, which is why I'm able to do what I do today, which is take nothing I learned in school and see the world in a way that most people forget to see anymore. Basically, I'm encouraging you to turn your day into a game. How many things can you find interesting? And ask yourself why. And the thing is that that is inspiration, right? Asking yourself why, why, why is inspiration. And a very simple tactic to find motivation every day is when people say, why not, right? So when you ask yourself why, and you see something, and you're like, why, why, why? Many times if you don't know how to explain it, just say, you know what, why not? So it's in a way you're inspiring yourself to be motivated, right? So what I'm trying to say, the last thing before I go is that, think of it this way. Every day, the world would not be funny. The world is not funny, but it is your choice how you see it. And as a comedian, my job is to not only see it funny, but to make it funny, so I see it interesting, but to make it funny and then charge you to hear me tell you something you already know and then go home laughing all the way to the bank, all right? Thank you very much, that is my time. It's been a pleasure, thank you.